good shit, brother. It's good shit. Cheers. Cheers. So what's going on, man? How how was the tour? The tour was great, man. You know, I think we ended yeah we ended in uh, early February, and I got to go I got to go back to Vegas for a little while, see my daughter and stuff. And oh, then, nice. Before I can come back, and then I came back here. And, just been kind of waiting for the next one. So you making Orlando your residence, or Orlando this... has become my new home. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. Oh I've, shit! I officially became. Well, I mean, they say what six months? Yeah, bring your mic a little closer. Yeah, they say like six months before you become a uh, full blown Floridian. <laughs> so I mean, I moved back here, and uh, well, I moved here in August. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh no so, shit! Yeah, I moved here back in August, and then uh, I've been kind of here since yeah so yeah. how 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 was how's everything out in vegas wise compared to here well vegas is just a whole different thing yeah i mean like it's just 24 hour town and you're always and it's like oh. you kind of like as, <laughs> as my girlfriend says it's kind of like you're in a fishbowl so like yeah, you dude. can't really go too far you're just kind of in it uh, we used to go out. We've seen you guys a bunch of times playing out there uh, at Viva, nice. you know, when we went out there and shit like that. And great shows, man. You guys put on a fucking hell of a show, though, Thank bro. You very much. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, now that you're out here, what's what's the goals here? Are you gonna, are you guys going to do some touring here too, or what? Yeah, I mean, everything just kind of just started happening yeah. really fast. And then I, I came out here and I was like, all right, well. What I'm going to start doing from the East Coast is probably start setting up a rig where I can start really working on playing more shows throughout the whole East Coast, all the way up and down. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, dude. I mean, like Vegas and the whole West Coast, we have it so locked down. We've been doing it for so many years. Well, you, you if I, I read up on you guys, so uh, you and your buddy Andrew yeah. started a band. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> tell me that story, dude. How the fuck did that go uh, about? Well, like me and Andrew, like we were in high school. Like we were um, my senior year in high school. So, oh, like, no shit. Yeah, yeah. It was um, my uh, senior year, and I was like, going on MySpace. And I was, I was in MySpace, <laughs> everybody had Tom, baby. Everybody had Tom. Everybody for a had friend. Tom. I kept Tom as my friend. See, I never <laughs> Me got too, dude. I made sure I kept them. You know. So I I went on MySpace, and I was gonna post a advertisement for to start like a rock and roll band oh no shit or like a rockabilly style band and when i went on there to go to to uh go post it i've seen another ad already there and it was actually andrew himmler's ad and it was it was him and it said i want to or he wanted to start a rockabilly rock and roll band and so i just answered his ad i was like all right well so do i um let's meet up let's talk and next thing you know i set up a a uh, just a little practice space called Mm. called mdv studios in las vegas okay and since 2008 all the way until 2023 we've always jammed and practiced in that same studio oh no shit yeah we've been playing in the same rooms i was i can look around and be like this room was a different color three years ago (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> shit dude that's crazy man. yeah so i met him up there and i never didn't know what he looked like didn't know anything i was i just showed up and i was i didn't know what room to go into and all i heard was one guy playing guitar in the corner and i i walked up to the room and i was like man i really hope this is him and I was like, it totally was him i was like all right cool let's start this shit yeah man. so started. you're 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 the lead vocals and guitar yes okay yes. i do rhythm work okay but still, still learning, you know. All right. <laughs> so it's a, every days day. of learning. Yeah, man, dude. Uh, you know, I, I, my nephew plays guitar and never took a lesson in his life. Fucking kid is like, he was born. Let me tell you this story, man. He was funny. It's, it's, it's fucking crazy. He was born three and a half months premature. Oh, they, the, the, the priest came in and read him last rites when he was born. Oh, okay. So they said That's if crazy. they said if he survives, he's either going to be deaf, dumb you know mute whatever this kid man can fucking play piano he can play a guitar like there's he's into that screamo shit man i'm not into that how old is he he is 20 28 now okay yeah but uh, it's about the right age and the right yeah so but he he's been in a bunch of bands too man and they they fucking kicked ass uh they actually shot their first video um 
and my mom's lake out back. Oh, yeah, so they cool. had like a dude doing like the underwater camera shit and stuff like that. The video looked dope as shit, man. And uh, I forget the name of the fucking band, but uh, they did a good job on it, man. It looked really fucking good, nice. man. Yeah. But I, I, it's, it's crazy. But like you said, man, fucking playing guitar, dude, is like something that you're constantly going to keep oh, struggling yeah. to fucking learn more and more and more shit on. Absolutely. It's a never ending type of learning. <laughs> <laughs> you're always learning and at the same time you're also always letting out yeah it's like the best way of letting anything out or or even excitement just go play guitar you're like okay let's go now you guys um your first album what was that uh 2008 uh the first album came out in 2009 2009 it was recorded 2008 or late 2008 and was put out in 2009 where are you guys at now like eight albums something like that no no no, no? no. i think we're on our fifth fifth, fifth album. album okay you're six working on the six nice so. nice you're uh the um what are, like what are what are some of the challenges you guys face when you're out in vegas you know what i mean um i mean challenges in, in like music wise yeah you know playing shows like between la vegas what were your you know some a lot know. of it was just making it happen like make yeah. it work like how are we gonna make this work like you yeah. just have to it's like all of us since we were so young okay we were 17 18 years old and we're like this is what we want to do and this is what i want to do for the rest of my life Hell yeah how man. do we do this non-stop and it was literally just you never give up yeah you never stop playing i was like you so it's like fucking tattooing man i tell people you know the day you stop learning is the day you should put down your machines and just walk away you know it's just one of those things you're learning something probably every show Absolutely. something fucking flows a little bit different here or there you know what i mean acoustics and a build you know everything's yeah. fucking totally different even your stage banter is like sometimes it's sporadic you're like oh i just said that all right cool <laughs> like it sounds really good so you try to remember for the next time yeah <laughs> now your guys in the band uh all original or no no now we are we we're on our second bass player okay our original bass player and our original drummer um i want to say oh what year was that 2012 2013 okay. they they wanted to move to california and start off and try to make it work so 2012 <laughs> yeah early 2012 so to so they so they moved to california and I tried to move out to San Diego to make it work out too. So I moved out for like two months and I was like, all right, I'm trying to make it work and try to practice and keep going. Right. I just couldn't find any work and San Diego is so expensive, especially at that age. Dude, so man, I, I've been out there once, um, long, many moons ago, bro. Um, yeah, that place is fucking wild. Yeah. I, you know, it's crazy. A lot of people are fucking, they want out of Cali, man. Oh, nowadays it's, 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 it's insane i mean like if you look at the gas prices here compared to i was just on tour in california and you're looking at almost six bucks a gallon it's no shit and you man. come back here and you're like oh relief <laughs> i know dude. i was like the the one day i'm driving to the shop and i'm like what the fuck is that walmart 309 pulling that bitch fill up real quick you know what i mean <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean that the fucking prices of gas in cali man they, it, what was it a couple years ago man what was it fucking 750 a gallon Almost, yeah, it was right there. When Dude. COVID hit, everything yeah. skyrocketed. And the I, same with Las Vegas. It's like, how the fuck did you guys cope with that shit, man? You just don't go anywhere as far as you can, you know, like we try not to tour towards California yeah. as much. We're like, all right, let's go this way instead. We'll go, but we were doing so many tours as it was. Yeah. You know, did COVID really put a fucking damper on things oh, for you? Everybody, especially the, 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 music industry yeah. completely and also at the time i was bartending as well so it's like everything shut down at the same time you can go to work can go to work you're just like all right i'm not i can't play shows and i can't Shit, go to work man. so i'm just gonna sit here and write i guess uh, that's that gave you a lot of time to fucking write it did give us a lot of time to write and also it gave us some more like ideas though, too because we we're trying to figure out how do we still play shows or still play for our fans and people that need yeah you know, just to keep going. And so we came up with a way of like, let's go live. 
Hell yeah, dude. And so we went live and just were like, put a whole show together inside a venue in Las Vegas that a good friend of ours owns, Carlos. Okay. And it's called Triple B's Backstage Bar and Billiards. Nice. And at when COVID was happening, the rules were so intense. You can be six feet. Can everybody had a mask? Can have six feet. You had to be six feet away, and we we wanted to you know put a camera out and then have like the operator in the room or something. And like, but the the instructions were so strict that he had to be in a whole separate building, running wires from a whole separate building. So it was only the four of us on stage, and we're looking at each other like this. This is. And this is intense, dude. They were doing that shit with uh, wrestling. Yeah. Did you did you see that shit? Do you, you ever watch wrestling? When I was growing up, I did. All right, so during COVID and shit, they were literally doing matches. You know, I guess they were testing. You know, doing their they would test. They would you know quarantine for so long and shit like that. But the arenas, man, were nothing but like fucking screens and there was nobody there. But they're fucking wrestling yeah. and doing shit in arenas, and it was just fucking people watching you know yeah. what i mean on monitors and it's, shit like that it's dude so it's hard. fucking nuts man yeah, so we, we we were playing and we're like all you have is this one camera that's like way in the middle of the room that's just focused on like just on you just on the stage in general yeah. and it would just like so we're playing and there's no response there's you can't hear anybody you can't you can't have somebody on a phone telling you what people think of anything you're just like all right Next song, <laughs> because I mean, like you almost feel like you're on TV, but you're yeah. playing to literally, you're just playing to the camera. Yeah, and it was such a unique experience that it it got such good feedback because a lot of people all around the world were trapped the same way we all. Yeah, were. everybody couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere. Dude, we were, man, we were fucking shut down man yeah. you know but thank god you know desantis man he uh he you know he, he's like you know this is all bullshit man you everybody's got to get fucking back to work man and we could wait dude but i tell you what man everybody during that time was making so much bank from unemployment and shit like nobody oh, wanted yeah. to go fucking back to work dude everybody had all this extra money mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to spend shit and then once they cut all that shit off things dropped down i tell you it, it, last year man was my worst year ever wow. owning a tattoo business wow you know all the years i've been here last year was by far the fucking worst man and it's just like what the fuck is going on then i forgot i'm like we're coming up to uh a political year you know what i mean oh, we're yeah. coming up to a presidential year you know president every, every year i think prior to an election year it things tend to tank a little bit and then they you i know, guess people get scared and want yeah. to make money more you know and they don't know what's gonna happen and what all the shit that's going on right now you got you know the shit happening over in ukraine and then you got shit happening in israel and you know people are just like what the fuck is going on and then you know people are worried about world war three you know right. nukes and shit like that but yeah where you're coming from but being on stage and and looking down and just seeing a fucking camera no, no, no pits, no nothing, nobody fucking singing words back to you. You know what I mean? That's it's got to be fucking strange, bro. Yeah, it felt like you're just like on a TV show, like, and that was it. You're just like, okay, I don't know who's <laughs> watching or how far away this is being broadcast, but we made sure we're like to tell everybody. We're like, you know, if you want to watch us play, like, we're gonna get together, we're gonna do this. And the minute that we started saying that we were gonna start doing these things, yeah, everybody got so mad at us, and they're like, how, how could you? get together like that and blah, 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 blah. They would go off and we get comments of, of get ready to hear it from everybody about, about being too close or being oh, on stage. Fucking not people going masks. on tangents and shit oh, like people, that. People oh were my going God, crazy. Dude. So I heard it from a friend of mine and he was like, Oh, I literally just watched my friend's band here in Belgium. Tried, tried to do the same thing. And they got so much, they got shit on for it because fucked up. because they weren't wearing masks. And I was like, are you? And I was, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. But I had an instant idea. It was, uh, let's all dress up as Mortal Kombat. 
Oh yeah, wear, dude. Because <laughs> we're gonna wear masks. Like it's like okay, so so we'll all just be different Mortal Kombat people. Get over here. That's literally yeah. it. Yeah, that was it. We walked out on stage and we're all masked up. And you I had to have a guy backstage. Crazy. Remember in the fucking fighting game, we were talking about this on a podcast not too long ago. Remember in the arcade game, you had that little dude that popped out. Whoopsie, you know, yeah. you had that fucking dude just shoot out from the curtain from the oh, back or some man, shit. Man, I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah, dude, that would have been cool. <laughs> One shit, more man. person. Yeah. But hell yeah, dude. But you know, so you guys survived all that shit and yeah. pushed through, man. That's good. Yeah, we kept going. And then as soon as we made that video, we had so many people come back and tell us, like, thank you. And like, thank you. Yeah, you dude, made because so much easier that, that year. So many people so cooped the fuck up with nothing to fucking do. People are going batty, man. Yeah. And, you know, no bands. You, you couldn't go see nobody. You couldn't go to no bars. You couldn't socialize. You couldn't yeah. fucking do any of that. And for you guys to do some shit like that and just, you know, touch the hearts of your fans and shit like yeah. that dude it's it, that's that's a fucking cool cool move man because we're all sitting there like all right well if we feel like this i bet you everybody else oh hell yeah man. so let's just release this and hopefully everybody else can get you know a day of happiness inside this covid bubble of bullshit yeah, exactly oh god dude <laughs> man bro I, I, I couldn't fucking imagine man you know just you guys sitting around like what the fuck man this is not good yeah, you can't can't play shows. You're like, wait, you can't go to work. And then I was bartending too, and the bar is all closed too. And you're like, yeah. oh, here we go. <laughs> what do you, What do you guys toward? Like, uh, how many weeks? You know, um, or do you guys go months at a time? We used to do like two months at a time. Okay. Um, probably like five, six years ago, we would go out for two months straight and do sixty shows. We just try to do sixty shows as much as we could and then now we've toned it down to like three four weeks at a time gotcha but also tried to we're still on the road about 160 days out of the year it's a long time so, still bro yeah it's still like 160 shows a year damn that's man. what we try to be so i mean there's still driving day. yeah <laughs> so, you uh your your europe tours how do they go for you really well yeah really well like it, the funniest thing is it's like we never toured in the states yeah. Until after we toured in Europe. Like, we toured in Europe, and people didn't know who we were, but they started coming out. Just no to shit. have music, and then this, the rock, the rockin' scene, or the, the, the psychobly scene, just the music scene just started coming out. And we, we went to Europe for our first time, I think it was 2010. Yeah, it was like, it was not even a couple of years after we started. And Isn't it crazy, dude, when you get over there? Like, the whole genre is totally fucking different from the states man they yeah. worship you fucking guys you know and and it's almost vice versa sometimes too because like you'll see all the people here in the states go oh man i got i got my, my favorite bands coming from france or coming from yeah England over yeah and like you almost see like the same reactions on people which is cool out of all all of europe where, where's your favorite spot this you know to to land you know what i mean to set up and just fucking rock out to be honest, I like all of it. Yeah. But we we do definitely have a larger base, fan base in Germany. Germany is huge. fucking it's huge, it's man. It's a huge country in the middle of all these little countries, so it makes sense. But I love this last tour. We're in Norway, which is like where my family kind of comes from. Okay. And we had like three days in the same hotel that was right in the middle of all these towns where we were going to go play, so we would go back and stay there in uh lilyhammer nice and turns out my family's from lilyhammer so we oh, have no a street with my name on it so i was out there and i was like where is this street i need to go find this <laughs> I, totally found it. I, found it. I had to dude i had a uh, so many moons ago uh i had a bar in titusville and uh so i used to book a lot of bands and i didn't book cover bands dude i booked bands you know yeah. i booked elvis and three bad jacks and shit like that Ooh. elvis would come out and play bob wayne oh yeah you know bob bob, Love bob wayne. so him and the guys crashed at my place you know oh, I, I i cooked up steaks <laughs> and stuff. but bob was sober then you know what i mean so he wasn't he wasn't drinking how long he, ago was this 
uh probably 11 12 years ago oh shit yeah it's been a while but okay and uh it was funny because he was telling me how like he's like dude fucking germany is fucking nuts he had a chick with him from amsterdam couldn't speak any fucking english but she flew back with him yeah and was hanging out with him and shit like that but i was like damn dude he's like yeah man we're fucking they they go ape shit for us over there and like they can't speak a word of fucking english but they can fucking sing every song on the album mm. you know what i mean I, it's just like shit like that just blows my fucking mind dude Exactly. You know, I was like, that's that's how the Hoffman did it. You know, David <laughs> uh, David Hasselhoff was huge in fucking Germany. Exactly. Bro. Yeah, Hell I mean, yeah, man. we played really small German towns and we're sitting there and like, you know, we look how we look and everything. We go to the corner market. Nobody speaks English. Yeah. Nobody speaks English. They just look at you like nine. I was speaking the English, but nine. <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, das Boot. Das boot. No. Das, um, here's my Euro. <laughs> yeah, right? So, but Cyber. shit, man. Yeah, dude. I, I've never been overseas. Um, that's one of my goals, man. Yeah, dude, you have to do it. Yeah. I remember I even when I was like in high school, I was like, all right, well, if I, you know, well, at the time I was about to join the, the core. Oh no shit. I was, I was doing I was doing a lot of pre boot camp training and everything. I was still in high school and then turns out I went and got this giant tattoo on my leg of of uh Eddie from Iron Maid. Oh hell yeah, dude. I, I got a giant Eddie tattoo and I came back and I was so happy and proud about it. And my staff started looked at me and was like, What in the is your problem? I was like, Uh oh. Shit. Instantaneously. Which one? Killer? Uh, um no the trooper oh the dude trooper yeah tattoo, dude fucking like, trooper. wrapped around my leg and i was like what it's not a sleeve and he's like that's a sleeve and i was like no nah, it's only on one side of my leg he's like no dude i always wanted to save uh, my life yeah. i always wanted a tattoo <laughs> eddie and ace is high you know oh, yeah. in the fucking pl- oh dude oh, yeah. Yeah, man i tell you man fucking iron maiden was the shit when i was growing up dude they put on fucking hell of a show you know bruce uh bruce is a fucking like he uh i believe if i'm correct he does uh ballet He's a he's an author, dude. He writes mm-hmm. children's books and yeah, shit, dude. He writes operas too. Does he really? Yeah, like dude. he could write music for operas as well. And then he's also he's got his masters. Mm. He's got he's 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 got masters in three or four different uh areas. Hell yeah. He's a pilot, you know. Dude, dude's a badass man. It's fucking cool. He's like one of he, my favorite friends. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, you watch him on stage back in the day, dude. He would fucking fucking Ballet across the stage, dude. Yeah. Like, he with such grace and shit. You know what I mean? Dude was badass, bro. Iron Man was, like, one of my favorites. Oh, up. yeah. So, but, uh, like I said, like, even back then, I was like, I'm going to join the core. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. And then as soon as I got shot down, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a rock and roll band. That's that. I'm still going to travel the world. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude. And you're doing it, bro. That's um, so fucking that, great, That was man. it from there on out. I was like, here we go. Dude. Oh my God. I just, I, I couldn't imagine, man, you know, traveling like that. You know, I traveled as a, you know, being a tattoo artist, I used to do conventions and yeah. sometimes, man, I'd, I, you know, I'd fly out on a Thursday, land at the spot, go to the hotel, go to the, the convention ground, set up, get everything, you know, and fly out Monday, come home, be home for two days and fly back out on a Thursday and do like two of those a month, man. Shit gets costly though. Bro. Oh yeah. And also, Aren't you constantly tattooing at, at a convention? If you do it right, yeah, man. So I would, I would, what I would do is I would get there. They usually have like an open day where you, know, you meet and greet the artists and you can book appointments and shit like that. So, you know, I would, I would do that, man, and meet people, uh, set up appointments, shit like that, take deposits. And then I just rock and roll all fucking weekend That's tattooing, cool. dude. And then have a fucking blast, you know, drinking, hanging out with people and stuff. Man, there was so many fucking, cr- dude, I could tell you some fucking stories of being, <laughs> there was a uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, dude, was oh. by far probably my favorite convention ever and i did that dude drunk and wild oh bro we ran (laughs) dude dude, we ran a fucking uh black rubber tarp down the hallway and dude came up man with the fucking two big fucking cooking gallons of like oil and shit and dumped it down they made a fucking slip and slide down the the fucking hallway of the hotel dude (laughs) it was badass man and, oh, yeah. it, and and it's like, you know, so they block off rooms on floors like, all right, yeah, we got a special rate for, you know, people that want to stay there coming for the tattoo convention right. and shit. And I felt sorry for the people that weren't there for the convention man, <laughs> that had a fucking room on that. Oh, my God, dude. Can you imagine it? It'd be like staying at the Orleans when Viva's going on. Oh, my God, dude. here for this. You're like, uh. <laughs> my, okay, so 
first year viva wife and i we go out there was uh, they book out the the year oh, yeah. year before almost I, I believe it's like a week after viva's done yeah it's already sold out yeah before you even leave the grounds when it's over they open up the the booking for the following year man it's yeah. it's fucking nuts Ooh. but the wife and i we didn't even i think what the fuck did we do we we stayed at the palms okay yeah. you know and uh so i used to i used to do a lot of uh gambling so okay. i called them up dude they hooked us up man i got nice. fucking badass room right then they were i guess when, when we stayed they were they were doing um uh construction like remodeling outside and i was like what's up with all the construction oh mr campbell you know don't worry about that they don't make any noise till after 8 a.m i'm like all right that's cool fucking 6 45 man motherfucker out there with a jackhammer <laughs> right i called down and fucking complained to the fucking the the lady at the desk she's like so they ended up taking a day off okay and they comp me 150 dollars in room service nice. so my wife and i free breakfast every morning man i'm talking good breakfast not that fucking you, you know you must hard. be a really good gambler i only play slots dude you want to play slots slots man you play a lot oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like I've... atlantic city new jersey dude oh, fucking shit. drove from philly to atlantic city okay rolled up my brand new truck rolled right up did the fucking vip the uh the uh which we call it where they take your card, the valet, yeah, yeah. right? I had my gold card on me, which was like the diamond layer. So it's like the the high roller slot slot player. Yeah. Showed them that it's free, you know what I mean? So I go in and mm -hmm. I always stop at the one nickel machine that I always play every time I walked in. So I put 50 bucks in that and I hit for 250 bucks on there that on five pulls. Okay. So I cash that out. I grab the waitress. She brings me a beer and then I go over to Diamond Cove, which is just for members of Diamond Club. So oh. you got to be the high roller to go in there. And these are the machines like you can play that are like 50 bucks a spin, 100 bucks a spin, yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So I take that 250 ticket, man, and I put it into the one machine machine and i hit it and i kid you not dude i wasn't in atlantic city more than 20 minutes in the in in, in the casino hit that bitch for 5700 dollars. cash that motherfucker out they didn't even get my truck to valet yet i just jumped back in my truck and fucking rolled on home dude did you and pay the taxes up front or did you take it home with you i took it home with me home? yeah i was I, curious i do all I that shit when people do hit it, depending on if it's over 10 grand dude i'll i would do the taxes there okay. if it's under 10 grand then you know you can, I'll take it and I'll do the taxes later yeah, in that year. Absolutely. But I, I know there's, I know some guys, man, that didn't fucking do taxes at all. They want a lot of fucking money, dude. And let me tell you, at the end of the year, dude, they're bent over a table taking that shit in the ass because back, they don't have it. No, nah, dude. Put it all back in. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, yeah there's, it's, it's yeah. crazy. But like you said, man, Vegas, Vegas is its own fucking world, bro. It's, yeah. Oh, it gets God. loud. It's 24 hours. You're always in it. I was born and raised. I loved it. You know, no shit. I'm like, I, I'm like I'm, when I moved to San Diego for two months, I was like, all right, everything closes. Um, I, everything's too expensive, and I'm, I was like, I'm out of here. I'm going back. I, like, I, want, I want my 24 hour town. Get my yeah. 24 hour town. Like, then COVID happened, and you lost half your 24 hour town. Yeah. Like, wait, how come Walmart's closed? Like, this ain't right, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's some crazy shit. Now, when you were over, um, over there touring in Europe and shit like that. And you, with Germany, how 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 often? Like, how many shows do you do in Germany? Mm -hmm. it depends on how long the tour is. The last time that we were uh, on tour, sorry, not the last time, but the prior time before that, right? We did, I think, twelve shows in Germany, and only one show in Belgium, one in Holland, okay, two in Spain. But to do twelve shows in Germany, that's that's a big. It's, I mean, it is. It's a huge spot, but we actually didn't play France. No shit. On that run, yeah, we didn't play France on that. But everything is strategically planned to come back to do it again. How big are the venues, man? Anywhere from two hundred and fifty to five to eight hundred caps that we can play for us sometimes. But yeah, the last time when when we were in Germany, we were we were selling out every night at five hundred. Damn, so it's it's a it's a cool sign for us to be like, okay, well, when we come back. We're gonna try bigger clubs and see what happens. So, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I was very, very happy to. to now you you have a manager, right? Who you, yeah. somebody that is like, all right, you know, I'm gonna set all this shit up for you over there. Yeah, well, we have like a booking agency. Okay. And then in Europe, though, um, the agency that 
oh, we were on, they didn't have too many contacts in Europe. And I was getting a little concerned because it's been three, four years ever since we jumped on Atomic Music Group Mm -hmm. that we just were only playing in the States. And I'm like, okay, well, what happened to Europe? Because we used to go all the time and play two months straight, 60 shows. And then we would go again and do two months straight and bring another singer from another band. And the band would back and do 120 shows. Damn. So we'd be there like all night. Like, all right, here we are. We set up camp and play all night long and go out and do it again. Your opening acts over there, are they locals or did anybody go with you? Some places we had local acts that, that would open. And then, uh, but when we would set up the two month tours, I mean, like we would do all of that setting up inside the band. Like Andrew Himmler would just be like, all right, I'm just going to start booking overseas again. And we would, contact our friends and be like hey does anybody want to play with us like let's go play oh, and yeah. yeah so we we've bring in, we've brought out a few of our friends bands throughout the time which also help us out too by you know with equipment stuff like that as well dude that's got to be tough though man taking all that shit over there no yeah that's why we we, we just kind of show up with our guitars oh no we're shit like, we're like okay we got our guitars we got our strings we got our sticks and then we'll play with our friends bands and stuff too. I'm like, Hey, like, okay, so we'll bring them on. And we're like, but we're going to use your equipment too, which is to make it easier. And we're going to pay you for it. So that way it's like, okay, they're making money playing shows. They're also making money for us to use their beating their shit up. Mm-hmm. Now. <laughs> I mean, like if we broke it, we'd, we'd definitely give them a new one or Hell yeah. we'd give them back. Like, all right, Sorry. <laughs> what the fuck happened here? Yeah, what is this? I was like, this is why I bring my own acoustic because I end right. up fighting it half the time. People are like, what are you doing? I'm like, this it's my guitar. Right. <laughs> I can do it. Oh. <laughs> How many do you take with you? Two? I only bring one. Only I bring, one? I bring one everywhere I go. Nice. I should bring two. I just don't have enough room or space for all that stuff. I know, man. They fucking whack you now for everything. Oh. Jesus crikey, man. Uh where the hell, we were flying so it was like you could you get one carry on and one handbag. And if you want to put something in the overhead compartment, you got to pay for that now and you got to pay to check your luggage. Oh, yeah. So you got to make sure everything. I was like, man, just shove all that shit in one bag, kick it under the fucking seat. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's fucking nuts, man. I've got, I've got certain backpacks that are exact size. I'm like, all right, this is the one I can bring because, yeah. I mean, you get a free, I mean, not a carry on, but yeah. you, get, you get your personal luggage. So you get yeah. a free personal bag. And I'm like, that's a Jan Sport backpack. That's exact size. So you just cram, <laughs> cram it. Show that shit in there, son. You yeah. got this, dude. I mean, I mean, because I'm also, I still, I still have to check like a whole entire case and everything too. And then like, I have another bag as well. So yeah. I'm like, what was your favorite favorite show, man, that you've done? Oh, you got one. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of favorite. Ones. What stands out the most? Um, sometimes to me, what stands out the most is like, well, Viva Las Vegas really stuck out a lot. When we did yeah. the car show for the first time yeah, outside, there was like 10,000 people there. Dude. Yeah. What year was that? I believe, I think that was 18, 2018. Okay. I believe so. 2018 yeah. when we fight, because like we, we played Viva the first time that we played Viva, nobody even knew who we were. Right. Like we played at the pool party on top of that volcano. Oh, no shit. Like, there's no there's no footage. There's no pictures. There's no That pool party is the, the bomb, though, party. dude. Yeah, long, long time. Yeah. It was like 2009. I drink them blue Hawaii's. Oh. That the fuck, yes. fuck you up, man. Yeah, so then you can't remember anything. No. I, I, watch, I watch it, man, because, <laughs> you know, they'll catch up quick. So, yeah. yeah. But we, uh, what was it? Uh, we were out there when Jerry Lee played. Oh, yeah. I and then... I love seeing Jerry Lee. Yeah, that dude. Just watching him play. Cool. Yeah, dude. And watching the original three Stray Cats play, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was I didn't, good. I didn't get to see him play. We played that same year. Yeah. And wh- I was blown away to see how much merchandise and how many stands that Stray Cats had. Because they were allowed to sell all weekend. Oh, yeah. And they were allowed to have multiple setups throughout the entire thing. Yeah. Which is crazy. Almost unheard of for every band that goes and plays. But... It's the street cats, absolutely. Yeah, you know? but it was badass seeing them, cool. them three all together. You know, fucking Slim Jim and Lee and, and fucking Brian just fucking rocking it out, dude. That's I wish I could see it. It was pretty cool, man. I think I think we played that year at the car show, and then they played the next day. Uh, 
So we end up leaving to go play in California. You guys played like during the day though, right? It was, I want to say probably between like five and seven, it was wasn't between it? Between five, five. Because it was hot as fucking balls, dude. Because yeah, like I we, remember we standing out there, my fucking hair was melting, son. <laughs> you know what I mean? My fucking suavecito uh, was starting to fucking drip down my head, dog. <laughs> you got, this ain't no Florida heat. It's, no, it's straight man, hot. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I, it, it's cool as shit, though, out in Vegas, man. Um, We're, we're actually taking a, a road trip. Out to uh, Arizona this summer. We're taking uh, the kids, my wife and I. We're yeah, we're gonna go out there and wait. What month in the summer? We're going in June, dude. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, our nephews graduate in high school, man. Oh, so cool, we're gonna nice. yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna hit like uh, the I ten fucking fancy stops along the way. All the oh, tourist yeah. attractions and <laughs> shit. You know, cool. I love Arizona. Yeah. Man. What? Oh fuck, man. What is that? Um, there's that fucking restaurant in that old ghost town out there. Shit, man. Talking about two tombstone. Well, no, no, there. in Vegas. Uh, oh, in Vegas. Shit, man. I, I forget the name of it, but uh, we went out there, man, had a couple beers and some food and shit. That was pretty Good cool. Springs. I don't know, man. Was it the Pioneer Saloon? That's it, dude. Yeah. Fucking Pioneer Saloon. Pioneer Saloon. Yeah, bro. A long time ago. I, I used to hang out there all the time. I used to help work. I used to help work there for, for a while. Oh, no yeah, shit. We, we shot, we played out there with the band and I've shot music videos. I shot two different music videos in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were really good friends with the owners. So. Yeah. That place is fucking it's sick, a cool dude. spot. Did, did you know that, that that's also in like a video game too? Oh, is it really? It's in Fallout. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I think it's that's the beginning of the game. It's like you're in the saloon. Oh, yeah, man, dog. It's really cool. Hell yeah, man. And that place is haunted as shit. Yeah, I know, man. I was doing dishes in the back one night and I could have sworn that I had the front door locked. And all I hear is the front door open and I hear boots coming. And I was like, oh, shit. So I put the dishes on and started walking out. Door is locked. No one's there. Mm. I was like, this place, it's over 100 years old. I just did a, uh, an episode, my last episode I did with a gentleman. Uh, his name is uh, Brian John Laverty, and he's a paranormal investigator, oh, man. Cool. And uh, we were, I was, I couldn't remember the name. I was like, I'm, I'm talking to him. I'm like trying to fucking go. I'm like, man, what the fuck is the name of that place? I was like, because when we went there, man, like you could feel something in that joint, man. Mm. And it's like, it still has that old Western vibe, dude, oh, yeah. that, that bar, the, hot, man, it, the old school bar and shit. One of those tables mm -hmm. is the original poker table to the bar. No shit. Yep. And if you watch our music video, um save me i set up all of the characters on that that table i set everybody up i was like this is the table we're gonna use this table oh shit this is the table where the poker game went went wrong that the dude was shot right at the right. table like oh, damn there's man. still a bullet hole right behind in the thing so it's like wow this is cool yeah we, we we went there and we went out to that other place man where the fucking planes are and shit like that and dude has like all these fucking cars and shit and the girls did a photo shoot oh, out God. there it was it was it was pretty badass dude it was cool as shit lots of fucking cactuses and shit like that dude they're like dude's like don't be fucking touching none of them yeah, motherfuckers yeah. man you're don't done touch that. Hell like, no, we used man. to play football in the street when we were kids and you'd throw a football and get it stuck into like a little cactus and you know like i remember grabbing the ball and then my hand was just littered fucking, with all these uh, little thorns. Just and, sitting there fucking plucking them out there. All day. Uh, it just hurt. Now, you're, you're, the tour that you guys just finished up here, where'd you finish up at? Last, mm -hmm. Where was your last spot? Where was it? It was in, I believe it was in, oh, it was in Boise, Idaho. I believe. Really? So. I believe so. Boise. Boise, Idaho. Hmm. To be honest, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit i think yeah because like we we went up north and then we headed over to boise and that was kind of like one of the last ones do you guys do anything like up like the the northeast section down like philly jersey oh, yeah. shit like yeah, that yeah, we, yeah. We go, go out to rhode island oh no shit go all the way up we've been up into canada but not on not on the east coast Best show I ever seen in Philly, dude, was a little hole in the wall. I got to see Sasquatch and the Sick of Billies. Oh, dude, that, a, that was a great fucking show, man. Dang. That boy could fucking jam. And if it's a small bar, I bet you that was very intimate. Yeah. Uh, buddy of mine, he puts on the, the Milltown thing out there. Okay. And uh, I think it's 
New Hampshire, New England, up in that area. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, Lance, he puts that shit on, dude. And, uh, I couldn't make it the one year and my buddy, he called me and he's like, you hear that? You hear it? I was like, motherfucker, he's playing there. And he's like, yeah. I was like, you're a dickhead, man. <laughs> and he's like, if, he's like, dude, he's fucking jamming. Oh, that's yeah. Cool, yeah it's a good show. This is some of the best shows. Oh, oh like, dude. You can go play in 500 cap room or thousand cap room, and, but you turn around and play for a uh, 150, 250 cap and everybody's just and just right the, on. The, yeah. And you feel everything, dude. Uh, the yeah. energy just, con- I mean, it comes alive. Dude. At that it's, point, it's just creating a whirlwind of heat. That's, yeah, that's, dude. That's all we focus uh, on when we, when we start doing that. I'm like, well, all right, I'm gonna make everybody sweat tonight. <laughs> we, Shit. we 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 end up being flown out to Mexico City to play a festival. Oh yeah. And uh, during that that same time, uh, well, the first time we were flown out for the one specific festival, and I can tell you the name of it right now, but it was in front of like sixteen thousand people. Dude, how'd that feel? It was amazing. We got like one photo from the whole thing, and it's just me going goodbye. Oh, <laughs> it's dude. Like, that was it. That... So, anyways, after that festival, we got brought back and we played like a pretty big club, but we ended up playing like four, four, four different dates. And one of those dates was such a small bar. And instead of you know having like just normal walls, kind of like behind the stage and stuff, it was around it. And it was such a small bar, and it was so hot. And nobody can leave. Nobody wanted to leave. Everybody was so jam packed. You couldn't even leave, you couldn't leave the stage. Like they they would not let you off the stage. Everybody is drenched. Damn. And everybody's screaming so loud that the stage behind us is rounded because it's a old round building. It created this whirlwind of screaming. It was so loud. My. All of our ears. It's just, like somebody over here is talking, and you can hear it fucking over here. And it, it almost sounded like you're in like a giant wind tunnel of scream. Damn. And man. like your ears are just almost bleeding. Like I was like, okay, we'll play another one. If everybody shuts up, please. No shit. And we're like, all right, thank you very much. Okay, but stop because it's hurting all of us. Like all of us were just like, here. It was cool though. It's some of the best shows are the ones that are where you're really intimate, really up close. Oh hell yeah, man. So, you get, shit, dude. <laughs> Fuck, man. But yeah, for you now being here, it's got to be a big fucking change, big difference, right? Absolutely. And I made sure that I moved out right in the midst of August. I was like, you know what? I'm coming. I'm gonna break myself in now. Sure did. (laughs) As soon as I landed, I was like, oh, did I just take a shower? You didn't even get through the fucking tunnel from the plane to the, you know, to the airport. No. Oh God. A couple days later, I remember I was I was sitting in the backyard, you know, like I was like, okay, you know what? And I remember I was like chopping firewood because <laughs> like we had this, this, this fucking tree, August. This tree, this tree was all this, this tree was just knocked down and everything. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'm gonna take care of this. And August like 10th, I'm out there chopping barefoot. <laughs> fucking a dude. And my girlfriend's looking at me like, you're you're definitely not from here. <laughs> like no, I'm not. But I'm trying to get used to it, and that yeah. was my way of throwing myself into the fire. Don't go camping in the summer. No. Nah, wait until the winter, the whatever winter we fucking get here. Is this winter right now? I guess you can say. Well, we got a cold front, you know what yeah. I mean. But it feels good though. Nice. It's nice when you wake up in the morning. It's like in the fifties or forties, and then by afternoon you got the high seventies, eighties, and shit like that's that's nice. Yeah, that's what people were like telling me like oh don't move to florida oh it's gonna be so hot oh you're not gonna like it's gonna be this give me that it's so hot and i was like so i get here and i'm like it's it's hot okay but it's not it's, it's not that dry heat it's not it's not hot like in las vegas like like you just said like it'll be 48 in the morning mm-hmm. go to like 70 and then drop back down yeah in the summertime in vegas like it'll get to 117 Fuck. at the Top of the day, it'll be 117. And at midnight, it'll still be 102. Shit. I hate to see radiation. those fucking electric bills out there, dog, on some of them motherfucking joints, man. No, you have no idea. Motherfucking little paying. squirrels on wheels running overcharged on those doing, bitches. I think oh. I was doing 500 bucks a month in my power bill. Damn. I have to run an AC. That's, That's a lot. Dude. That was a lot. Yeah. Was, uh, we keep that bitch set at. Actually, I had 78, 79. Yeah. I tried it. I was like, you can, you can barely live in it. I was like, this is terrible. (laughs) 
just sitting in the house one day, man, laying in bed. I'm like, God damn, it's fucking cold in here, man. I'm like, why is it so fucking cold? I get up in the middle of the night and I go check the thermostat. My fucking daughter hit that bitch, dude. She dropped that motherfucker down to fucking 50 something degrees. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and the number one, I don't know if the, t- the temperature in the house, man, was like, I think it was like 60. That's cool. And uh, Ooh, I was like, cool. but man, that bitch was fucking working overtime, man. I'm like, I need to buy one of them little glass cases to put over top of that bitch so they don't touch it. You know, <laughs> my kid the other night, he's like, is it going to get colder in here tonight? I'm like, well, take a fucking blanket off and, you know, just sleep that way. Turn your fan on. Yeah. You'll be fine. It'll, it'll get chilly. You Woke up the next morning. He's all fucking wrapped up because it's in the forties. You know, I ain't got no heat on. I think we turned the heat on once this winter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just once. But I, it's, it's nice though, man. I, I like it here. I grew up in Philadelphia. You know, so like so being up there, they call you Philly John. Yeah, man, I got that name here actually. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a funny ass story, dog. Uh-huh. I was working in a tattoo shop in this little town not far from here, and uh, I was working in there and promoting myself pretty decently. And uh, the owner was in there, and these these couple girls come in. Where that Philly boy, that Philly John, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh shit, Philly John," it's and it stuck. fucking not, and it's stuck, dude. It's, oh, it's been that cool, way for though. many, many moons that now. Is really, that's yeah, really he's like, "Oh, man. Philly John." <laughs> like, yep, and everything's been Philly John ever since, man. You know, uh, uh, it, it's just one of those things, you know. But to this day, I don't care how old you. I'll be fifty, okay, this year. <laughs> I still get called Little Johnny. Oh, by my family. Oh, I'll call out, oh, reach yeah, out absolutely. to my, my, my family and shit. And be like, oh, little Johnny's on the phone. I'm like, I'm fucking bigger than you, man. You know, <laughs> little Johnny. But yeah, man. It's, it's kind of like it's, little John. I mean, it's the same, the same scenario, right? Yeah. You know, do but, you have multiple Johns in your family? I'm the fourth. Uh, I'm the third. My son's the fourth. Third. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, my grandfather and my dad were all the same. Oh, that's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, At so, least it's like a handed down name. Yeah. That's cool. And uh, it was it was crazy when my grandfather passed away. Uh, right before he passed away, he's like, you know, he's like, he said to me, he's like, do me a favor. I said, sure, pops, what's up? He's like, keep the name going. I was like, you got it. And I tried to do it with my ex-wife, trying to name my son John. Right. She 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 wasn't going for it. But we named them after two really cool fucking people, Elvis Presley and James Dean. So nice. it's Presley James, you know. But that's cool. But my son. John, you know, I said to my wife, I was like, we got to name him after my uh, grandfather and my dad and stuff. She's like, oh, definitely, definitely. So that's what we did. Oh, yeah, man. So really he's cool. a good kid, man. He's fucking huge for his age, man. He's 11, man. He's fucking beast, man. <laughs> it's as tall as my wife, wears the same size shoe. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Fucking oh, man. time flies, dude, oh, with yeah. the kids, man. How old yours? Mine's seven. Set. Yeah, mine dude. actually this going on 30, right? Yeah, next month should be eight. <laughs> So, like, she's already turning eight. I'm flying out for her birthday. I'll be there for her birthday and everything else, too, you know. I'm that's still not missing a single beat as much as possible. That's good, man. So, um, I'll, I'll be there for her birthday. But, yeah, she's also very tall for her age. Everybody thinks she's 12. Yeah. They're like, whoa, hold on. I'm like, because she comes way up to here. I'm 6'2", and she still comes way up to my breastplate. Yeah. I'm like, yo, slow down. You don't have to be so tall. Yeah. But, you know. Just bring this in a little closer to you, but Yeah. It should be seven going on 17. Next thing I know. I know, man. My my daughter, uh, she, she'll be 10 this year. And holy shit, dude. I, it, it's tough, man. Kids today, man. It, they just oh, so fucking spoiled. It's a, it's a different it's a different environment. It is, man. Compared to how we all grew up. You know, I, 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 I'm Generation X, man. I'm, I'm fucking... You know, we played and drank out of the outside till it was dark, drank out of the fucking, you know, the the hose on the side of the house. And summertime, mm-hmm. we sip water that was 90 fucking degrees when it came out, you know, but it is it is totally different. I think a lot of it has to do with the technology today. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it's just fucking nuts, man. It really is. It makes them grow up quicker than what you need to. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was born in 89. So I grew up in the 90s still, like, running barefoot on God cement. Damn, dude. And you'd be like, all right, be home before the streetlights. Okay, that we still had that. Like, we still had the phone connected to the wall. I remember people just slamming it. 
And now I'm like, I can't go anywhere without it. Yep. And I'm like, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> but I have to have. If I didn't have my businesses and what I do, man, I I always said, I was like, oh, I don't think I would have a phone. If yeah. I did, I go back to a flip phone oh, where yes. you had the text with A, A, B, B, C, C, you know what I mean? Like, you know, shit like that. <laughs> go back to the old school next tell, man. Like, let me get your chirp number. You yeah. remember those? Doop, doop. This shit like that, man. <laughs> Fucked up shit, man. Yeah, like, I think I really was, like, the last generation that was that streetlight generation. Like, yeah. all right, be home before that or you're SOL. Yep. You know? I know. Always made sure yeah. we were home for dinner. Yeah. And called at least once or twice throughout the day to check in. Yeah. You know, always kept 50 cents in my pocket to use the pay phone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. People are like, pay phone. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, that thing was in a box that Superman used to change. <laughs> you know, some crazy shit, man. But yeah, the kids today, man, I think they're, you know, they do. They have a totally different fucking uh, vibe than what we had. And the technology that they have today is just mind blown. I mean, Christ, I grew up on Atari 2600. My kids playing PlayStation five right you know the graphics in that man it's fucking great i mean i bought them gta for christmas <laughs> <laughs> very very realistic these days oh yeah dude <laughs> he was playing it and he's like dad he's like come here and i go in there and he's like what is this i'm like that's a titty bar son you know? <laughs> uh we didn't set the age restriction ah oh, fuck it <laughs> i bought it for myself to play but i haven't played yet man Remember the first one was actually yeah. really, really fun. Oh, yeah. When it first came. I played it on a computer, too. Yeah, I didn't play it on, like, a console or anything like that. Yeah. I played it on a... Everything was still had a, still had that digitized, didn't have... The, you couldn't really see the faces. The no. cars were still kind of squared out. Yeah. Now everything is, like, to the T. Oh, hell yeah, the man. Hair. The AI shit, man, that's out there now, dude, is nuts, bro. It's getting crazier and crazier. Yeah, dude. I mean, fucking... You could take a song and your voice Mm -hmm. and make it your song you know they could somebody could take your voice Mm -hmm. and put it on another song and it's like you singing that fucking thing like when you see that with the johnny cash video have you ever seen that ai does johnny yeah yeah dude it's mixed with something else i can't remember what it is but it was so it was so realistically there do you listen to his grandson his grandson? Yeah. Are you, you talking about uh, Four in the Strange? Are we talking about Hank, Hank the Third? Uh, Johnny's grandson. Oh, sorry, sorry. So I was thinking Hank for a minute. Nah. Oh, man. What the? I, I I follow him on uh, Instagram. I don't. I don't think I've heard him yet. Oh, holy shit! I follow dude. his son a bit, but his son doesn't do. You know. No. Doesn't do um. Where's so. that here? Hold on a second. Let me find out. Oh. Um. Give me a second, dude. That's it's. it's Fucking mind blowing, bro. Man, I gotta hear yeah. this. Uh, hold on one second. Where's he at here? Trying to find him. Sorry, folks. <laughs> We're just looking and shit like that, man. But oh my god. Um, where the hell is he? But his his voice, man. He does uh his he does a cover of. Johnny Cash's song, um, I think it's Walk the Line, and it's like holy fucking shit. Isn't it? Uh, it's haunting, right? It sounds yeah. like a lot like his grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I, I might have heard it, a snippet of this before. Uh, let's see here. We'll pull this up real quick. Uh, <laughs> it's um, Thomas Gabriel. Oh, okay. Uh, dude. Here. Uh, just pulling this up real quick but i it's 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 crazy dude uh i couldn't fucking here he is yeah close your eyes and listen Right? Yeah. Can I see that video though, just right quick? Yeah. Let me see. Just scroll up. 
or down. Oh, he had the big old beard, man. Dude, yeah, man. Dude is badass, man. Oh, he's he's got he's got Johnny's eyes. Oh, hell yeah, man. He looks like my tour manager, Rich, though. Dude, his <laughs> voice, man, it fucking blows my mind, bro. Oh yeah, that's an, I love it. I love Dude, it. I could just fucking just fucking jam out to him for hours, bro. I could too. This yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, man. Dude's ph- phenomenal, bro. Phenomenal. That's amazing. Yeah, man. that's amazing. I, I want to see him play now. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, hard on. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Shit. Yeah, you need man. to get all the grandkids together for the for the highwaymen. Oh, dude, all, dude, man. Together. That'd be cool. <laughs> Love the highwaymen. That'd dude. be cool if they could. Fucking uh I I don't know. Willie Nelson, Chris, all those boys, man. It, it was just like one of the greatest thing ever, dude. And some of the some of the world's best songwriters. Oh, hell yeah. All dude. put together. You're like, oh. man. God, man. The good old <laughs> days, man. Now you got shit where people are singing. It's like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> you know? Like, is that a word? Okay, well, it, it's a word now. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, dude. It's a fucking word now. Bro. They made it a word. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, um, Bob, Bob's got some good songs, man. I like Bob's shit, man, because oh, Bob's like a storyteller, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, it was great because I, uh, when they, when they played my bar, man, it was a fucking great show, man. I, I, like I said, man, I booked like good bands. I didn't want to just book like fucking local cover bands. I wanted to drag people in. We're like, where's this little fucking hole in the wall place at, man? And it's playing fucking this band, you that, know? That's how it should be. Yeah, dude. And I, like, I, I had, still respect, you know, other bands that play for four hours and do yeah. all this, but it's like, okay. But I had Elvis, Three Bad Jacks come out and play, man, which was a fucking, dude, he lit the cymbals on fire. Now, my, my <laughs> ceiling, my bar was low, bro. I'll have to show you the fucking pictures. And the flames coming off the cymbal, dude, were hitting the fucking drop oh, ceiling. Man, I, I was did. like, dude, <laughs> oh, man. Stop it. Yeah, dude. Uh, Lucky Tub and Modern Day Trebadors. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Lucky came out. Him and Casey. Uh, Casey was the upright bassist. I knew Casey prior to the band and stuff like that. But uh, they all came out, man, and jammed out, dude. That was a good fight fucking time too That's man cool. it was a great song i got so lit on that he let me come up and sing uh the final song which was damn the luck one of my fucking favorite song oh, cool. out, out of that album dude fucking love that song that's neat man, man. Like, yeah dude the first time i saw bob wayne in las vegas that's that was instantly hooked and we oh. became we became instant friends too like oh, we yeah. were like during those days i used to drink a lot we used to party all the time so we're sitting in vegas and he's like hey man you want to drink i was like absolutely let's I was like <laughs> from that moment that we said hello, I don't think we left the bar for like 13 hours. We no were just shit. in it. Just waste. That's, <laughs> dude, that's, that, I'm telling you, man, Vegas, man. Oh, I've seen some shit when I was out there for Rockabilly Weekend, bro. Mm-hmm. God, damn, I've seen some dudes just like, how the fuck are you standing, bro? <laughs> Seriously. Go to bed, come down, it's still in the same fucking spot. I'm like, God, <laughs> damn, man. That's- dude. That's that's hardcore dedication right there, bro. Got some pick me up going on all night. <laughs> some nose candy and some bump lines, baby. Oh, I know? remember, yeah, back back in those days, and stuff. Even when I was younger, I'm like you wouldn't go home. Yeah, I'm like you couldn't drive home anyway. So yeah. it's like, all right, you're not going to stay in just a random room. So I just, I had a truck back then. I just go sleep in my truck, wake up, go just right back. In, in the no, 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 purposely. <laughs> I would purposely sleep in in the back of the truck. Oh, the bed. In the bed, I would yeah. just sleep in the bed, just fall asleep. And I would wake up, and I remember going right back inside for the next day of Viva. It's like, oh, how's it going? <laughs> like, yo, you're still in the same clothes. I'm like, I don't care. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. I I I've done some crazy shit in my times too, man. Like I, the whole traveling tattoo convention. There's some. It's it's almost like traveling in a band in some sense oh, because you, you meet up with so many people that you you build this kind of like little click with this this group of guys this group of, you know you become a family and then you meet up at this at another show later on the next month or the month after that and then you know you make sure that you get set up next to them and next to them and next to mm-hmm. them and then you break down the dividers in the booths man and you open up one big fucking booth and it's like a fucking family and then when the end of the night comes man it's just like where are we going you know what i mean party yeah dude and yeah. it's you know sometimes the guy that's putting on the convention will throw a little private 
private something for just the artist and we'll go do that or or they'll run like some type of beer specials and drink specials in the in the hotel bar nice. i mean cool. yeah we've drank some fucking bars out of shit man <laughs> I, i'm sure you've been in that position too i bet man. you have though i mean like I've, I've never been to a tattoo convention no i've never been i've, hey, I, I've only like when b was starting setting up tattoo booths i was like well okay I know, dude. I was shocked to see it's that shit, like man. This. Okay, yeah. it makes sense. I've they, seen them I all. think they were like off the beaten path, though. Some of them. Yeah, it was. It was like all the way in the arena. Mm-hmm. Something's like way out there. Yeah, like, all right. I'll be out there tomorrow. <laughs> I, that's the worst, man. It's like when they they spread it out so far. And you're yeah. like, somebody tells you something and you're like, well, I, I, I walked over there. I didn't fucking see nothing. Oh, no, you got to go down the hall. <laughs> you go through those double doors and you yeah. go past that guy in the, the corner. Walking escalator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go all the way out there. Oh, shit, man. But yeah, dude. So uh, ooh, what it, what it, um, now that you guys are done, the tour and shit like that, you have plants, uh, new album soon. What are you, what are you guys working on? Uh, right now, we've, we've got four other tours kind of already lined up oh no shit yeah so we're, we're booked out for the year already so really when's that start um the next one starts in april yeah it'll start in april um where do april, you kick it off at let me see april 11th i know we are starting in austin texas oh shit mm-hmm. fucking and love austin it's baby it's been a while since we've been in texas and we the really? thing is we love texas oh. and it's been i think two years Hell yeah! And we did we 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 did the same thing with England. We're like it's it was like three years before we went back, and everybody's like yelling at us. Like, why why haven't you been back? But this time we're going out with uh, uh, four in the strange band. Oh yeah, which is Hank Williams, you know, great grandson. Mm. So I'm like, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Man. So I've just been listening to him for the past you know couple months and just enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to see how this one. Goes. I I I saw Hank three up in Michigan at the Machine Shop. Oh. Dude, what a fucking show. No opening band. Because he, well, obviously, he has so much. He comes out, man. He does his fucking rebel country. And then he switches that fucking hat to his Copenhagen hat, man, with the flaps, dude, and goes straight Mm -hmm. in the fucking ass jack. Man, he just fucking rocks, bro. Goes nuts at it, dude. What a fucking great show. (laughs) And then uh, I've seen a lot of cool bands up there. You know, fucking Rev, a bunch of times up there. Um, Then, uh, Eric and Vic, I went up and saw those guys, man, the Coffin Cats. Yeah, I was going to say Coffin Cats. Yeah, yeah, I was man. just talking to him today. Oh, Vic? <laughs> I was just talking, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Eric and I was talking to Tommy. Oh, okay, yeah. There you go. Er- Eric was uh, going to be on, man, but we were trying to line something up when he came down for the holidays and shit like that, but uh, it, it didn't happen, but I fucking love Eric, man. He's such yeah. a cool cat. Dude. They're all nice people. Oh, dude, They're Vic, man, nice. yeah. I saw um, them in, in Michigan, too, at it's a little place called Smalls. And uh, they played out there too. Was it was it there? No, or was it the machine shop? No, I saw Three Bad Jacks in uh, Smalls, which was cool, nice. dude. So that's that's fucked up there too, man. Because Elvis and the guys were playing there, man, and uh, he lit the symbol on fire. And they, I guess, they hired a new sound guy that runs the sound for that place. You know, for the the facility, mm-hmm. dude pulled the fucking plug on him, man. Oh. Like Mike's just go dead. He's like, what the fuck, man? You know, he's like, you don't understand. We play here all the fucking time. This is what we do. It was crazy shit, man. Damn. Yeah, dude. That uh, was wild. Sound guy's first night. Yeah. <laughs> Already fired. He, he fucked up, man. <laughs> fucked up, bro. Fired up. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. And tour starting again in mm-hmm. April and stuff like that. Yep. What yeah, do you guys? We're doing, we're, we're doing like a southern, southern Midwest, like keeping it right here and then after that we head back to europe where are you playing in austin uh you know we're playing we have so many places we're playing at the it's a place called come and take it mm. mm-hmm. but with number the next day we're in san, san antonio and then off to houston nice you know so we've got a lot of friends and yeah there's some cool fucking spots out in austin oh, yeah. though man broken mm-hmm. spoke oh yeah. Oh, yeah i got um i always make sure to uh um stop and see my friend he tattoos as well and last time I was out there, he was like, hey, man, if you're coming out, if you got any free time, I was like, yeah, let's go. Who's your buddy? Uh, my friend Ian. Oh, yeah. But he's 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 not working at a shop right now. Mm. But uh, the last time I, I literally showed up and he's like, all right, so what do you want to get tattooed? I go, I have no idea. And he's like, what? And I was like, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I've been on the road for like three weeks. 
and I just showed up and I have today off. And I was like, well, we're well, like we're in Austin, Texas. And I was like, I love Willie Nelson. Oh, and shit. I was like, well, we're going to do a Willie Nelson tag too. And I just pulled my pant leg up and I had him, I had him do this awesome Willie Nelson tag too on my leg right here. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's <laughs> and, badass. Uh, and a long, and like a long time ago, I got to see Willie Nelson. I, you know, like right up front. I was a, uh, well, I, I didn't pay for right up front. It was, it was in Las Vegas. It was at the lakeside, okay. which is a very bougie, very fancy place. I didn't know how bougie it was until I got there. I paid decent, like a lot of money for these tickets. <laughs> and I got 10 rows from the, from the, from the front, dead in the center. I made sure to get right in the center, 10 rows from the front. I was like, all right, cool. If I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy it. And then I was like, I'm going to try to bring a record or something for him to sign. And I got so high beforehand, I left everything in the fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as I sat down at the show, a lady behind me scoffs. And she goes, <clears throat> and I like look over and she's looking at me. And I was like, what the fuck? Why? And I was like, for a second there. And then, and then I hear her say, I can't believe that they would give the help better seats than us. And she was looking right fucking at me. No shit. I looked up. I was like, are you shitting me? I was like, uh, at the time I was getting upset. And, uh, and I was, I was sitting there and, uh, I was with my ex at the time and, and I was sitting there and she's like, don't, don't say nothing. I was like, I won't say nothing. And the show's going on and it's been going on, you know, for about an hour or so, a little bit more. And I'm starting to look over and I see a whole bunch of people sitting down in the front. No one's saying anything. And I was like looking and, and then I hear this lady say something again. And I don't, I can't even figure out what it was. I just said, so mad. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> Stood straight up and I was like, we're going to the front of the stage. I walked straight up to the stage because it was like, I could put my arms right on the stage like this. And I was like right here and I was about eight feet away. I was pointing at Willie and I was like, and then. Next thing you know, everybody stood up and went right for the stage. I was like, that's how a show should be. Yeah. When he finished like one song after that, and everybody was having him sign like all the stuff they just bought out front. And I remember I pulled a dollar out and I was like, and he's, yeah, and he, he's just signing everything. <laughs> he's signing this, signs this, and he stops, he sees the dollar and he's like, signs it, hands it back. And I shook his hand mm. and I got it tattooed on my leg. With nice. that, with that Willie Nelson thing, I was like, I want his autograph tattooed on this too. Hell yeah! That's what I, I was like, so Texas, I have a, I have a big spot for my heart. I, for I, Texas yeah, I, I love all. My wife and I were in September this past year. We were going to go. I bought us um, two tickets to fly out, and uh, I booked the hotel, and I bought us two tickets to Joe Rogan's Mothership Comedy Club out there. Well, uh, our uncle ended up passing away. Oh. And uh, so we ended up 86 in the trip and we decided to, you know what, we're going to reschedule. We'll go back out another time. But yeah, Austin, Austin by far, there was a bar. I can't remember the fucking name of it, man, but they play chicken shit bingo, dude. Oh, shit. You know what that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of it. I've, oh, my God. I've dude. never I've, seen it done, but I've, yeah, heard it. I've seen the cages. Uh, yeah, dude. And, like they throw this big old fucking uh, like... Uh, it, you know, fucking sheet of plywood with bingo numbers on it on top of a pool table, and they fucking's got a little cage, and the chicken walks around, I guess, and wherever it mm -hmm. shits at, man, that's the fucking number, bro. I just, I'm, I almost feel bad. It's like, it's like, what are you feeding the chicken to shit this much <laughs> within this amount of time? I just, I want to know. Dude, like, chickens it's are <laughs> chickens are fucking vicious, dude. Mm -hmm. They fucking eat anything, <laughs> anything. I've watched. A motherfucker. Uh, we had chickens when we lived up in Michigan. Nice. I watched them eat snakes. Oh shit! Yeah, dude. Yeah. I frogs, chicken nuggets. <laughs> the motherfuckers will eat fucking yeah, eat themselves. And so, uh, were, were, were you feeding them chicken nuggets? Yeah, my daughter. Oh, that's fucked up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, man, eat this fucking nugget. I mean, you know they fucking scarf them down, bro. <laughs> and I feel bad basing chicken breasts and eggs over here. Oh, <laughs> But yeah, dude, I, I fucking love Austin. Um, greatest show that you've seen yourself. What is the greatest show you've ever gone to and seen? The Doors of the 21st Century. Really? Yes. In 2005, my next door neighbor got free tickets off of the radio. And they couldn't go. 
And they knew that I loved music. And at that time, I said, I was like 10th grade or something like that. Ninth, maybe ninth, 10th grade. And uh, so they gave it to me and my dad. And they said, here, we can't go that night. You guys can go. And um, the reason why it was my favorite show is because I weaseled my way all the way to the front. (laughs) Once again. (laughs) Once again. (laughs) I weaseled my way to the front. And I was, like I said, I was in like ninth, 10th grade. And this kid tries to jump on stage and the security guard straight up punched him so hard in the face. And the singer, I can't remember his name. Um, if you look it up, the doors of the 21st century, um, he had both of his sons sitting side stage, mm. literally sitting in chairs. And he almost stopped the show. He's like, you let that kid up here. Blah, and start going off. And the security guards went. No the security shit. guards walk to the sides. So that kid goes up. Another kid goes up. Person goes up. Someone goes, you go, I go. Oh, no shit. I'm Someone up, jumped, baby. Jumped up there. <laughs> all I can remember was Riders. It was Riders on the Storm. And it was like, I'm on That's stage. That's the fucking song, bro. You know, I'm on stage. And I'm like, this is like my one of my favorite songs, too. And I'm just I'm just looking. And um, right before the solo goes off. And I'm looking like right at him. And I just I just remember screaming. And I don't even know where this came from. And I was like, you are God. <laughs> and, and and for the life of me, I cannot recall the guitar player's name right now for the doors. It's Jim Morrison? No, that's oh, the singer. The, the, the guitar player. Oh, oh God, man. See, I feel terrible because I actually read his entire autobiography book. Uh. Um, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, hold on, we'll figure this out. Anyways, yeah, I looked at him straight in the face and I screamed, You are God, Robert Allen. No, all right, we're gonna figure this out together. Here we go. I was like, What is this? Hold on, hold on. And I should really know, I'm just a little <laughs> nervous right now. So everything's kind of left. I'm showing my age, man. I forget, shit. I'm it's bad, like, man. There we go. I'm Robbie that- Krieger. Oh, Robbie yeah. Krieger. yeah. Not, I, I always get Ray and Robbie mixed up, and it's it's my fault Ray's on keys. Yeah. But Robbie, I just looked right at him, and I screamed, you are God. And he looked at me, and he shut his eyes and did the whole solo. And I was just blown away. Blown away, because we're just dancing in a circle on stage. Just it's so young, too. Yeah. I jumped off stage, and this lady grabs me by my arm, pulls me forward, and she's, like, petting me. And she's like, I've been a Doors fan my entire life, and I've never been as close to them as, as you have. And I was like, get off me. <laughs> I just want to pet you. Yeah. Let me, I was like, I was like, what let the, me smell you. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and uh, I remember walking off, and my dad was way in the back, and he was all drunk. And he was just like, is that you up there? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, it's fucking cool. And I, that moment on, the rest of my life, I knew where I kind of wanted to be. I was like, I'm going up here. That's awesome, going man. On stage. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I my favorite concert I ever went to, man, was I was learning how to tattoo. And I was in my 20s. Uh, I think I was like 26, man. Okay. And uh I was kind of doing a so-called apprenticeship at a shop in Philly. And my buddy Link was working there, and his girlfriend, wife, girlfriend, Rebecca worked for another shop on South Street. Mm-hmm. She comes in that night. She's like, oh, my God, you're not going to believe who I tattooed tonight and blah, 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 blah. And she pulls out of her fucking jacket two backstage passes, man, for Slayer. And we're like, no fucking way. Fuck. Five tickets, two backstage passes. We all go see Slayer. So we're taking turns with the passes to go backstage, man. The greatest thing of my life was being on stage from me to you. To Kerry King. And the fucking third song in, he goes, War Ensemble, dude. The fucking roof just goes off this joint, dude. Oh, it was the man. greatest fucking feeling in the world, dude. Dude, that's gotta yeah. be awesome. And uh, Sepultura, Sepultura, oh, yeah, yeah. they opened up for him. It oh, was, cool. it, yeah, man, it was a good show, dude. Yeah, it was uh, it's a great lineup. Uh, I, th- I think it was the 
the electric factory is where it was at, man, okay. in Philadelphia. I don't even know if that fucking joint is still around, man. Uh, but yeah, dude, it was one of the coolest shows. But you know, I you know, I grew up, you know, eighties and like long hair fucking metal was my <laughs> thing, dude. I, I I used to have the fucking jacket, awesome. the leather jacket with the jean jacket mm-hmm. with all the patches over all the top. studs, all the oh patches yeah, dude, there. I yeah. had all that shit. I'm, I'm the youngest of four, so are I, you? I, I had a lot of hand me down. Everything was like, and my brother was way into punk. And my other sister's way into Grateful Dead. And then I grew up on classic rock and and Elvis. Yeah. So it's like just mixed everything together. Dude. And I just loved it ever since. I found blues music by myself and I was like, who I just instantly fell yeah. in love. What'd you think of um the movie, man? Which one? The Elvis Presley movie. I didn't watch it halfway. I got maybe halfway through it. Yeah. And I, I had to go do something. But I Need to give it another try, is what I can say. It, it, you know, I think it's more or less based off of the Colonel and shit like that, mm-hmm. and the shit that he did to Elvis. Yeah, and I, and know, I think Priscilla was had a lot of say in it. Too, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. 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 It was, well, her movie's out now on uh, I think one of the channels right now. Oh, I wow. think it's on Max mm-hmm. called Priscilla. I want I want to see that because yeah. like, her story is way intense. Yeah, seeing everything yeah. from her eyes, man, dude all the shit that went down mm-hmm. I, I i couldn't imagine man I just couldn't imagine but watching that 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 elvis movie man just fucking blew my mind the shit that that man went through and the drugs and the and the stuff and how he got fucked over bro oh uh, dude i can imagine oh my god a man. lot a lot of most of his stuff was i mean he never really wrote anything yeah so it's like you're just doing covers and everybody else is getting paid but but he was like the but king. You're the on king. That shit, so man. you're like, yeah. you got to keep going. And you're like, all right, here we go. Fucking <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> shit, man. Yeah. Holy crikey, man. Oh. But now, um, what, uh, you, uh, your next album, you guys got something in the works? Um, nothing at the moment. No. We, we just put one out, um, what was it last year? And, uh, we worked on it for about a year. Yeah. And then, so we, we've been talking about it and kicking around ideas for, for the next one. Because this last one that we did was called Neon Sounds. And I just wanted to literally write whatever I wanted when it came to me. Yeah. And that's why every song just kind of is a completely different song from the next. And we got, we got a lot of people who were like, this isn't rockabilly. This isn't this. This isn't. And I was like, no, this is everything. This is everything. So on this next song... We're going to probably pull it back more center target. I'm not even exactly sure because the way I write is so more sporadic. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, man. My favorite song that you guys sing is the cover smokes that light. <laughs> Every time I'm in the bar, dude, as soon as I fucking walk in the bar, dude, the first Dang. thing I do is I jump on my fucking, I, the, the, uh, the touch tunes on yeah. my phone. Cause I download the app on my phone so right. I can buy the credits on my phone <laughs> and it's great. Cause I skip motherfuckers, man, in the bar, people will be up there putting like 10 bucks in. I'm like fucking pass ass i'm fucking playing that shit man. Oh, man and i'll start playing shit people haven't heard in fucking years right and then oh that's how i do it in a bar man i'll start playing <laughs> dude i play everything from the isley brothers man to fucking Ooh. you know jerry lee to, I, i'll play it all man yeah. and and then I'll, I'll throw that song on from you guys and they're like who the fuck is this and i'm like <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, oh, baby. Thank you so much. Oh, dude, yeah, man. You guys are phenomenal. Great fucking band. You got such a great voice, a great sound, dude. I love listening. My wife loves you guys to death, too, oh, man. So, uh, yeah, man, we actually bought, I think, two of, I, I'm not sure which ones, but I think we bought two of your albums when we were out in out in Vegas. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, thank dude. Thank you for... Um, who else was out there that we saw? Was it JD McPherson? I had JD yeah. McPherson on that too. Yeah, yeah, he was out there, man. Yeah. We we picked up that album too, nice. and we actually saw him in uh, Wolf Teeth. The, the what? The album called Wolf Teeth. Is yes, yes, yeah. yes, it's a yes. Great album. Yeah, but uh, man, dude, there's there's so much great music out there and it's so hard to keep up with sometimes man because you know i'll get a text like hey dude have you heard this and i'm like nah and i'm like holy shit man and i'll go down a rabbit hole on fucking on music and then i start hearing shit online like i got hooked on billy fucking strings dude have you ever listened to billy strings i've heard a few yeah 
dude, man, his, uh, there's a, the, uh, what is it? The, the, the cocaine song or something he sings and he's just hanging out in the fucking basement and dude's just recording him on the fucking phone. And the, the way he moves his fucking fingers, dude, up and neck of a guitar. That's cool. It's fucking, it's mind blowing. Cool. It's unbelievable. Dude. <laughs> unbelievable. But yeah, man, Delta Bombers, fucking great, man, dude. Thank I you, love man. you guys, man. Thank but you. Chris, thanks so much, man, for Absolutely. coming in tonight, dude, and now, hanging out, bro. Thank you for having me in. It's, it's oh, my yeah, pleasure dude. to come up. You know? Yeah, we got to do this again, man. Yeah, man. I'm not too far away anymore. Bro. I know, bro. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, man, we'll have to meet up. I got some fucking Elvis memorabilia I like to show you, man. Nice, It'll cool. fucking blow your mind, yeah. dude. I got all kinds of shit, dude. Yeah, like when, when I was super young, my dad would just invite neighbors over and put records on and just sing Elvis. And he yeah. sounded just like Elvis. So I was like two and I would just sit and stand with him and try try to sing. And then have you seen that thing online that's been going around of that gray hair fucking preacher guy who says he's he was he's Elvis? He's oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've and, seen uh, it. I've seen it. He sounds a lot like he too. does too, it's dude. Scary. And he, he's got some of the facial features and shit like that, but he's all gray, dude. Yeah. Beard, hair, shit like that. That's the way to do it, though. If you're oh, yeah. if you're in that position and you need to just be gone, yeah, that's the only way to do it. That's it. That's man. it. You can. That's the only way. I mean, oh, yeah. if you get that popular, that it's insane. Yeah, it's it's fucking nuts, man. I, I, man, dude, I just I, the shit that that man went through and the dope, the drugs and shit like that. But man, he he was on top of it, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, Chris, man. Thanks Good again, job. brother. Cheers, brother. Cheers, Thanks for man. coming in, Bubba. I Thank appreciate you, man. it, man. Definitely. Thank you very much for having me. Now I'll have links to all you guys in the description on this cool. podcast. So you guys out there listening and watching this podcast, check out Chris, check out the Delta fucking bombers, baby. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Man. All right, guys. Peace. See y'all.